Welcome back everyone to Ain Sof Learning. I hope everyone's having an amazing day. This is part two of Parashat Bereshit because I felt that we didn't do justice to the first episode because we only spoke so little. So I'm going to try to speak less and let Rabbi Abu Khatsera do all of the work. So let's open up Pituke Chotam, or excuse me, Machsov <laughs> Halavan by Rabbi Yaakov Abu Khatsera, paragraph number two. Od Darsho Rabotenu Zechronam Livracha Bereshit Beshvil Hatora Shenikrat Reshit. In the in the words of our holy sages, the word Bereshit is referring to the Torah. Shneemar Hashem Kaneni Reshit Darko. God acquired me at the beginning of His way. That's Proverbs 8:22, and the sages explain the word Reshit is referring to the Torah. So anywhere in the entire Torah that you see the word Reshit, which means beginning. It's referring to Torah. That's one of the ways to understand the meaning of Reshit. So Bereshit, bara lukim et hashamayim bet haaret can be translated as through the Torah, God created the heavens and the earth. That's where the, the Jewish mystical concept that God opened up the Torah and the world was created came from. It comes from this understanding that was actually from the Midrash. This is coming from Midrash Rabbah 1.1. One, one. What does that mean, God looked into the Torah? Was there a physical Torah? Well, one thing that we already know is that Torah is the highest wisdom. Literally, it's the highest level of chokhmah. Chokhmah means wisdom. It's a spiritual uh, level of consciousness called chokhmah, the Torah. That's where the Torah comes from. So God used the highest wisdom in order to create this world. The Torah is the highest wisdom. It's the blueprint for the creation. So he basically looked at the blueprint and he created the world from this blueprint. The Torah is the blueprint. So if we take the gematria of the word HaTorah, the Torah, in Hebrew, we know that every single letter in the Hebrew alphabet has a numerical equivalent. So Aleph is one, Bet is two, Gimel is three, and so forth. So if you take the letters of HaTorah, He, Taf, Vav, Resh, He, you get the value of 616. Now, if you take the gematria of this following phrase, Adonai Melech, Adonai Malach, Adonai Yimloch, Le'olam Va'ed, God is king, God was king, and God will reign forever and ever. It's the same gematria, but you have to add two for the kolel, because of kolel purposes, they are the same gematria. HaTorah is the same as God is king, God was king, and God will forever be king. What does that hint? Why, wh what's the secret here? Because everything that connects with numerical values it shows a hint, a, a clue to something that we have to investigate deeper. So Rab Abu Khadzera is telling us that this informs us that the main purpose of the creation and the giving of the Torah is that B'nai Yisrael, the children of Israel, know and recognize that the Holy One, blessed be He, which is referring to God, is the King and always was the King and will always be the King forever and ever. That's the hint. And it says that the entire purpose of the creation was for us to recognize that He is the King. And that ain't od milvado, that there's nothing besides Him. Many people think that whenever we say the verse ain't od milvado, there's nothing besides Him, it means that God is the true God. That's not what it means. Yes, it means God is the true God, but it's something deeper than that. There's nothing besides God. That's the deeper level of understanding. It's not just that, oh, there's only one God. No, no, no. That one God is the only thing that exists. That, that's a deeper level of understanding. Because what do you mean that's the only thing that exists? I exist. This computer exists. You exist. What are we talking about here? But just to put that in your mind, if it confuses you, it's good. That means you understand. <laughs> but anyways, there's nothing besides God. And the Jewish people should be strengthened to fear, to love, and to serve Hashem with really a full heart, a complete heart, wholeheartedly. From the bottom of our heart, we should have a desire to receive the light of God for the sake of giving Him the pleasure of being able to give us that pleasure. Because there's nothing more pleasurable for God than when we are capable of receiving the good that He wants to bestow. God is a giver. God has nothing to receive. There's no way that God can receive. Why? Is He lacking something? Why can't He receive? No, no, it's not about lack. It's that He's perfect. And something that's perfect 
doesn't have any deficiencies. Therefore, there's nothing that can possibly be added to him to correct him or improve him in any way. God is complete and perfect. That means there's nothing he can receive. So he's a giver. By nature, he's just an absolute giver. The desire to bestow and create and, and grow and do good, that's what God is. But we as created beings, our sustenance comes from him. So we by necessity are composed of a desire to receive. Because you need to be sustained by the light of God. You need food. You need some joy in your life. So you need to receive all day long. But how do you receive? And that's the whole study of Kabbalah. It, the word Kabbalah literally means to receive. The, 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 the translation of the word in English is to receive. <laughs> so it's all about receiving. But you don't want to receive something that you did not earn. That's what the whole entire wisdom is here to teach. Sometimes we receive pleasures or, or certain types of light, because pleasure is light, that we don't have the capacity to store within our vessel. And so it gives us a short fuse. It's not good for us. That's what a sin is. A sin is whenever we try to jam too much light in our vessel because we, don't, we simply don't have the vessel for it. But whenever we learn how to serve Hashem with a complete and undivided heart, that means that we're going to follow His Torah. We're going to listen to what He says because the mitzvot are the way, they are the tool of how to convert your desire to receive selfishly that's based on short-term hedonistic pleasure into a desire to receive for the sake of doing God's will and that's serving God. That means doing everything l'shem shamayim. That it's not necessarily bad to receive. It's not. You have to receive. You have to stay alive. You have to provide. Therefore, you have needs. You have to pray. You have requests. So there's nothing wrong with receiving. But it's the way that you do it. It's the way that you go about receiving. If you right now go and receive something for free. That's not good. Why are, you, why are you receiving something for free? You have to earn the things that you receive. And the Jewish people must serve, and they will learn how to do it eventually, one way or another, either the easy way or the hard way, <laughs> either through free will or through <laughs> the learning it the hard way, and then eventually they will do it through free, will, through free will. But they will eventually reach a point, the Jewish people specifically, they have to do it first in order for the non-Jews, which means the nations, the 70 nations of the world, to also reach that level. To love and fear and serve Hashem with a full heart. Furthermore, the words Bereshit bara, the first two words, which means in the beginning created, is the same gematria as Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. The Shema Yisrael the holiest prayer, the holiest verse, the holiest meditation in the entire world, not just in Judaism, but in the entire world, is the Shema Yisrael. And if you take the numerical value of the first two words of the Torah, and you have to add two for kolel, you get the same exact numerical value as Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echad. What's the secret there? This is, a very, this is one of the deepest secrets, which we're not going to immediately understand right now, even after the explanation, what which is okay. want to make known? Why is he giving us this hint? that the main purpose of the creation, what's the main purpose of Bereshit bara? Bereshit bara means in the beginning God created. Why did He create? What's the secret here? The main purpose of creation is for the children of Israel to know and recognize that Hashem is our God, Hashem Elokeinu, and that He is one, the Hashem Echad. Shema Yisrael, listen children of Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Hashem is our God. And Hashem Echad, God is one. Hashem Echad, those two words, God is one. Oh, just tremendous amount of depth to those two words. Most people also misinterpret that phrase. They think it means there's one God. Of course there's one God. What's the chidush there? What's the new epiphany? Yes, there's one God. We've been saying that for thousands of years. That's not the point of what we're saying in the Shema. The Shema is speaking of something much deeper. It's saying that everything that exists is God. Hashem Echad doesn't just mean that there's one God. It means that there's nothing besides God. He's the one and only. Echad doesn't just mean in the singular sense that there's one God. It means in the sense of oneness. God is oneness. is the highest unity where everything exists in that realm which we call God in its perfected state. 
Nothing exists outside of God. We think we're separate from God. Like we said earlier, Ein od milvado. That's the deeper secret of the Shema Yisrael. So that's why it has the same numerical value as the first two words of the Torah. To teach us this secret. The religious people, not just in Judaism, but in all of the religions, they think that ah, as long as I'm doing the bare minimum of my religion, of my religious ideology, ah, I'm going to go to heaven. Thank, thank God I go to heaven. Screw this world. I'm going to go to heaven. Forget everybody. That's the wrong way to think. That's the backwards way of, of looking at the world and what life is all about. Judaism teaches that heaven is not up there. Heaven is down here. But we can't see it. We don't feel it. Because we're making a mess out of it. We want to bring heaven down here. Shamaim on Haaretz. To make a dwelling place for the light of God. So that everyone in this created world will benefit through the presence of God in this world. We will live in harmony, peace, joy, and happiness. That's the whole purpose of the creation. That's the reason God created the world. That's the reason God gave the Torah. That's the reason the Jews were chosen. That's the purpose of why the Messiah needs to come any moment now. Any moment now. But not instantaneously. People who've waved their flags, Mashiach now, Mashiach now. Yes, ideally we would want Mashiach to come right now. But how does he come? Does anybody know how Mashiach comes? It's a collective Messiah, a collective redemption for the entire globe. For the entire universe. So how does that take place? It takes place whenever the individuals which make up that world do their individual tikkun. When they bring their individual Messiah. Because each one of us is basically a spark of Moses. Every single Jew, every single Jewish soul comes from Moses' soul. Every single non-Jew is when they're connected to the Jews. Whenever they're connected to God through the Torah, through the teachings of the Jewish people that are being proliferated for the nations, they too are connected to God. So we have to wake up. The Torah is the only way, is the only answer. And whenever we learn, Bereshit bara lukim et hashamayim ve'et ha'aretz, whenever we realize what it means that God is the creator of this world, therefore God chooses who gets which piece of land. The land of Israel was given to the Jewish people. I'm both speaking to Jewish people right now and non-Jewish people. But why do I speak to Jews? Because sometimes, whenever the nations rise up against the Jewish people, we become scared. We go and we hide. We become fearful because we're getting persecuted. Instead of standing up and waving our Israeli flag and standing up as proud Jews who were literally chosen for the ultimate purpose in this world to be a light unto the nations, Instead of owning our responsibility, we run. Why do we run? Because we don't have enough faith. So is it a fact that people are suffering in the world, not just in Israel, but all over the world? Yes. Is it true? No. God still cares about the Jews. He hasn't forsaken the Jews. Because what is the suffering? The suffering is supposed to be a wake-up call. It's God punishing us, but from a, from a place of love. We don't feel the love, but it comes from love. That's the secret of the Shema. There's another secret in the Shema. Hashem, the word Yud He Vav He, the name of God, is God's mercy. And the name Elokeinu or Elokim, which is Aleph Lamed He Yud Mem, is God's justice or God's uh, judgment, His attribute of Din, law, of uh, uh, justice, which is the strength and severity. So the strength and the severity is Adonai. That's why we say Hashem. Elokeinu. Shema Israel Hashem Elokeinu. Yud Hei Vav Hei is our God. That means all of the punishments, all of the dinim, all of the punishments that are happening in this world are coming from Yud Hei Vav Hei. The divine attribute of mercy. The punishments are coming from mercy. The bad is coming from good. The pain is coming from love. That pretty much wraps up this video. But I hope it was inspirational because we are the Jewish people. Do not forget who you are. So we need to do Teshuvah. We need to return back to where we once were and where we currently are. But we just don't perceive it. We have to reconnect with our source. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you were able to benefit from it. And if you were, please share it with two or three people to help bring up their spirits during this tough time. Because believe it or not, these types of things are going to happen more. These types of devastating things and tragedies that we see in the world, they're not going to stop. 
Because it matters where your consciousness is. If you're connected, you're not going to have to suffer these punishments. If you're not connected, you have no choice. What are you going to rely on? You have to rely on yourself. But if you rely on God, Hashem will never forsake the Jewish people. Never forget that. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you were able to benefit from it. If you were, please share it with two or three people. Like the video, subscribe, become part of our community. We're growing faster and faster every single day. People want to know the truth. People are waking up. They want to know what do the Jews have to say? What does the Torah say? So thank you so much and I will see you in the next video.